The King Band method of section construction is a really powerful technique for quickly drawing cross sections through folds which have really abrupt fold hinges and the limbs represent um, panels of constant dip. And in the first program, we looked at how we could apply this method to forecast the position of a layer that we'd encountered once in a well and use the construction method to propagate this information through a series of um, fold axial surfaces, thereby creating um, a cross section. Well, that was for just one layer. Let's take this method and push it to construct another horizon below the green layer, deeper into the subsurface. We'll construct this one at the scale of this diagram, three and a half centimetres down. Okay, so that's, that's the level of the horizon we're going to construct through the profile. So the first thing I'm going to do is extrapolate our axial surfaces down into this area here so we can simply uh, construct the horizon through. So the first one's straightforward enough. I'm going to take it right off the bottom of the page. And, uh, just as simply a straight line extrapolation. But if we do the next one through here, we can see we've got an interesting situation arising because something's going to happen, these are going to meet, and I'm going to make an arbitrary choice that this one abuts into here. We have a similar situation over on this side, and again, I'm going to take the arbitrary decision that this one here abuts against that. So we'll then propagate this one down through the section to the bottom of the paper, like that. We're going to have another decision to make here, but perhaps it won't impact, so I'm going to push this one down. Eventually, whoops, eventually we'd have to make a decision down in here, but I don't think we'll have to just now. Uh, and then we've got another one that right up the far side over here. So a slight glitch in my uh, drawing, but um, not too bad. Okay, so off we go. Let's uh, draw this projected in, and I just need to take this. It's the same dip panel as all this, so it's just parallel to the beds we've got in green down in here. So I'll just trace on, and it's just going to creep on at the bottom of our paper here, where it intersects the axial surface in that position. And now it's going to come back in this orientation, like this. Try and keep it parallel to the dip that we've got there. As it happens, this line comes up and intersects uh, the place where all these axial surfaces are meeting. That's um, a coincidence. The key point is that this trace of our bed does not enter these two triangles, which are the domains for these two dip panels. Rather, it's going to inflect on that axial surface and go over here. Now, here we have an interesting situation because it's entering this dip panel. And then this dip panel. And then finally this one over here. So there is our horizon coming through the cross section below the green bed that we traced out already. Well, if you look at this, actually there's a bit of a problem developing, and it concerns the uh, assumption that axial surfaces are mirror planes. Let's look at this area here. If we look at this axial surface through here, it does not bisect the angle between these two dip panels. It must run over something like this. In other words, the axial surface has to deflect um, to uh, honour the behaviour. So let's reconstruct this axial surface. I'm just going to ext extrapolate that bed trace there using pencil so that you can see we're not going to get confused. And I'll use my compass. Like this, just to reconstruct.
the axial surface as we go past this point. So this is actually what our axial surface does. It goes down here and then kinks. And I'll just to emphasize the fact, I'll annotate this to show that this is the true antiform axial surface. Comes along here and then kinks out to the outcrop surface at the top. And if we do that, that uh, honors the idea that the axial surface bisects the interlim angle. And this, this trace here is, uh, has no meaning. So we've developed the kink bad method. In the first program we saw how we propagated a single formation through the subsurface on the basis of encountering it in a well and using all the information at outcrop to define dip panels and the inf changes from one dip panel to the next happens on axial surfaces that are essentially mirror planes. Now, what we've just seen is that when we push the technique deeper into the subsurface, we're moving further away from the primary observations and data that we collected up here, represented by the um, dip orientations. And as a consequence, as we go further down, the axial surfaces, which are not parallel, begin to converge, at least in the core of the antiform. And therefore we need to make a choice, and it's an arbitrary choice, to take this axial surface and make this the primary one to propagate deeper. And as a consequence, it's consumed these two dip panels in the higher in the fold structure. The fold, as a consequence, has got a simpler form at depth than it has nearer the surface, nearer the direct observations. And this is an artifact of the construction method. There's no particular reason why structures should get simpler with depth. Furthermore, the decision we're taking about which axial surface is the primary one going to depth is arbitrary. And that means that the cross-section we're constructing down here is not a unique solution required by the bedding data at outcrop. They're decisions that influence the final geometry. So it's a great method, but you need to be aware of these decisions that you're taking when pushing the cross-section further away from the primary data.